नमस्कार हेलो नो भाई वॉम वेलकम व्यूअर्स यू वॉचिंग संसद टी वी स्पेशल प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स इंडिया फ्यूचर द ग्लोबल ऑटोमोबाइल इंडस्ट्री इज गोइंग थ्रू अ पैराडाइम शिफ्ट ट्राइंग टू स्विच टू अल्टरनेटिव और लेस एनर्जी इंटेंसिव ऑप्शन टूडे द गैलपिंग सेल्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स सीम टू बी प्री कर्सर टू अ ग्लोबल इलेक्ट्रिक मोबिलिटी रेवल्यूशन इंडिया इज ऑल्सो हेवली इन्वेस्टेड in this electric mobility shift the burden of all imports rising pollution and international commitments to reverse the global climate change are just some of the factors that are powering and driving india's transition to e mobility so how will electric vehicles or evs become the dominant mode of transportation in india in the near future let's find out so fasten your safety belts and get ready for this speed ride The future of mobility is at a critical point of inflection. Every time oil prices spike or climate change is debated and discussed, electric vehicles are inevitably underlined as an integral part of the solution. The push for electric vehicles is driven by the global climate agenda that was laid down by the Paris Agreement. to reduce carbon emissions and limit global warming it is also expected to improve the overall energy security situation of india given that the country imports 80% of its crude oil requirements for a cost of no less than 100 billion dollars the unveiling of the scrappage policy by the prime minister the entry of major disruptors in the two wheeler segment the demand for electric four wheelers running ahead of supply are all proof of the country's commitment to reduce transport emissions main bharat ki aur se is chunauti se nipatne ke liye panch amrit tatva rakhna chahta hu pancha amrit ki saugat dena chahta hu pehla bharat 2030 tak apni non fossil energy capacity ko 500 गीगावॉट तक पहुंचाएगा दूसरा भारत 2030 तक अपनी 50 परसेंट एनर्जी रिक्वायरमेंट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी से पूरी करेगा तीसरा भारत अब से लेकर 2030 तक के कुल प्रोजेक्टेड कार्बन एमिशन में एक बिलियन टन की कमी करेगा चौथा 2030 तक भारत अपनी अर्थव्यवस्था की कार्बन इंटेंसिटी को 45 परसेंट से भी कम करेगा और पांचवा वर्ष 2070 तक भारत नेट जीरो का लक्ष्य हासिल करेगा फॉर डेकेट्स ग्लोबल ऑटोमेकर्स हैव बिन एंगेज इन अ क्वेस्ट for new and sustainable alternatives to fossil fuels the environmental degradation caused by burning fuels is a fact that no longer can be denied or hidden which is why the pressing need to switch from fossil fuels to environment friendly alternatives can't be put off any further the world has joined hands to pledge its commitment to a carbon neutral world with zero carbon emission and electric vehicles will be the key to achieve this goal Nations like the UK, France, Norway and Germany have all enacted laws to ban sales of non-electric vehicles by as early as 2025. All this makes the EV industry one of the most exciting, significant and necessary innovation today. India becomes the center for exports of two-wheelers, three-wheelers and in due course of electric buses from India to the rest of the world. that is the big challenge for india and i am very very hopeful that we will be able to convert india into a global manufacturing hub for electric vehicles to the rest of the world we'll use the strength of our domestic market to become a global champion in all these areas curious to know how evs would handle on the road will they be slow to respond or smooth do we have to learn to drive them differently let's take you out for a long drive
electric vehicle enthusiasts share a common sentiment. Once you drive an electric vehicle, you can understand. Driving an EV is such a different experience from driving a conventional combustion part vehicle that it only takes one drive to get hooked. And once you own an EV, you will never want it any other way. Electric cars are incredibly easy to drive. The reason precisely, because they are electric. First of all, you don't have to worry about the gas. Just simply press the start stop button. Since it is automatic, you just have to go from neutral to drive and off you go to your destination. The easy response of the electric powertrain that delivers instant torque and acceleration at any speed is intoxicating. The smooth and quiet ride of a vibration-free energy source automatically makes EVs more comfortable than comparable combustion cars. One of the biggest differences you'll experience the first time you get behind the wheel of an EV is that there's virtually no engine noise. With no internal combustion taking place in the engine, no exhaust being emitted, the only sound an EV car makes is from the wind passing over it and its wheels on the road. People want to keep driving electric vehicles to enjoy these heady perks of their driving experience before they even start comprehending the immense savings in actual costs. So it's simple to speed up, but there's even a better design to slow down. So every time you lift off the throttle or push the brake pedal, the car not only slows down, but also tops the battery a little bit. In many electric cars, taking your foot off the pedal will allow the car's built-in energy capture system to slow down enough for more situations. Of course, there are also conventional brakes when you need to stop more quickly, but some people find them only necessary when parking. This regenerative braking is not only one of the greatest differences between an electric car and a petrol or a diesel model, but also one of the key attributes that make them so easy to drive. In fact, when you get back into a car with a conventional engine, braking seems wasteful because you're not capturing and reusing some of that energy. An electric car or bike can be easily plugged into your home and charged with an EV charger. Over 80% of the electric car users charge their EVs overnight at home or at work. पीछे चार्जिंग केबल है सॉकेट है ये कंपनी इंस्टॉल करके जाती है जिसे आप इजीली कहीं पर भी 15 एंपियर के बोर्ड पे लगा के इसको चार्ज कर सकते हैं और कार जो है वो इतनी साइलेंट है बिल्कुल भी आवाज नहीं है इंजन नहीं है इसमें और इंजन ना होने की वजह से मुझे बूट स्पेस मिल जाता है पीछे मिल जाता है और आगे भी मिल जाता है और कार ऐसा नहीं है कि इलेक्ट्रिक है तो बहुत स्लो है स्पीड नहीं पकड़ती अगर आप ये 9 सेकंड में 100 किलोमीटर्स की स्पीड पकड़ लेती है बहुत इजीली और इसमें डिफरेंट डिफरेंट आपको एरियाज में चार्जिंग केबल मिल जाएंगे जहां आप इजीली चार्ज कर सकते हैं इस चीज को और सबसे बड़ी बात मैं इससे पहले डीजल कार चलाता था अब मानेंगे कि उसमें मुझे पर किलोमीटर 8-9 रुपए पड़ता था इसमें मुझे पर किलोमीटर 1 रुपए पड़ता है तो जब से मैंने कार ली है मैं 4000 किलोमीटर चला चुका हूं और ऑलमोस्ट मैं 40000 रुपए इसमें बचा चुका हूं चार्जिंग बहुत कन्वीनिएंट है इसमें आपको बस एक ज्यादा कुछ नहीं चाहिए आपको 15 एंपियर का एक सॉकेट चाहिए इजीली घर में अवेलेबल होता है ठीक है आप उस पे चार्ज कर सकते हैं बेस एक चीज का आपको ध्यान रखना है कि अर्थिंग जो होनी चाहिए वो इंटैक्ट होनी चाहिए जितना अच्छा अर्थिंग होगा उतना अच्छा पावर सप्लाई मिलेगा उतना ही जल्दी ये चार्ज करेगी अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट अब जो फास्ट चार्जिंग है उससे भी आप एक घंटे में एटी यू कैन चार्ज योर व्हीकल और एटी परसेंट घंटे के हिसाब से बहुत होता है इतना पैसा तो बचा ही रहे For six lakh electric vehicles on road, we have roughly 2,000 public charging stations today. This density of charging stations is cramping the use of EVs. Lack of standard battery and charger, as well as the high capital cost of setting up charging or swapping stations, is a major infrastructural bottleneck. Power Ministry guidelines mandate at least one EV charging station every 25 kilometers on both sides of a highway. It also calls for at least one EV charging station for long range and heavy duty EVs at every 100 kilometers on both sides of the highway. The ministry says that at least one EV charging station will be set up in a 3 by 3 kilometer grid of the cities. The government is trying to use the 70,000 petrol pumps across the country to set up at least 22,000 EV charging stations. 
Oil companies like Indian Oil Corporation and Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited have pledged their outlets to set up 17,000 EV charging centers in the coming years. The manufacturing sector, the industry, because most of the industry people, they say that whatever government could do, they have already done. Now, it is on those industry captains, it is for them, those of uh, the mobility leaders, it is for those thought leaders to take it forward. At the same time, the consumers are also taking it forward in a big way. The way electric mobility is progressing forward in states like Karnataka, Kerala, in states like Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Maharashtra. So it is, it is phenomenal. Want to charge your EV? But how will you do that? Let's find out. So there are simple steps. Step 1. Install Electrify from Google Pay, register and login. Then you can quickly scan QR code on the charger. You can select suitable charging option. Review the details and pay. Get the booking confirmation. You can view real-time charging status. And of course, there's option to stop charging or to unlock connector from the app. Largest bottleneck that we are facing in charging infrastructure is uh, largely around land and um, power connections, right? A very progressive policy and guidelines were introduced by Ministry of Power on 14th of January, uh, where we have introduced revenue sharing models. There are a lot of other uh, new initiatives that Ministry of Power has come out with, so you can charge your electric vehicles at home. I think uh, it is just a matter of time since it's a very chicken and egg situation. Once we have more uh, electric vehicles on road, this uh, we will be looking at more investments, more debt financing uh, solutions, more um, you know, more um, availability of capital at uh, reduced rates and th that should be uh, solving the charging infrastructure story soon enough. It is estimated that two out of every hundred cars sold today are powered by electricity. EV sales for 2020 reached 2.1 million. The global EV fleet totaled 8 million in 2020 with EVs accounting for 1% of the global vehicle stock and 2.6% of global car sales. Government of India has taken various measures to develop and promote the EV ecosystem in the country. Ranging from the remodel, faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicles or FAME scheme of 10,000 crore for the consumer side to production-linked incentive or the PLI scheme for advanced chemistry cell, around 18,000 crore for the supplier side and finally the recently launched PLI scheme for auto and automotive components for manufacturers of electric vehicles. All three schemes cumulatively need an investment of 1 lakh crore. It is expected to boost domestic manufacturing and facilitate demand for EVs and batteries besides developing a complete domestic supply chain and foreign direct investment in the country. The program envisages an all import bill reduction of 2 lakh crore rupees and import bill substitution of around 1.5 lakh crore. Battery is something which we have been importing from the South Asian countries for years. And if you see that in 2021, India has imported lithium ion batteries of around $1 billion. Now, the dependency on the West or I say the South Asian nations has not been allowed to us to self become independent or achieve the indigenization or have a domestic value addition. So what it led to is the production link incentive scheme or I can say the center initiated the process where they want to promote the manufacturing of the batteries in the country and for that what happened was that uh, 13 sector scheme in the production link incentive was approved by the cabinet with an outlay of 2 lakh crores and in that the most important and the most complex and sunrise sector was the battery program with an outlay of around 18,000 crore. The program runs for the next 5 years where we are going to select the bidders depending upon their commitment of 25% valuation within two years and minimum 60% valuation in next five years. And the expected investment for a 50 gigawatt hour program is going to be around 50,000 crores. Karnataka was the first state to introduce a comprehensive EV policy. It has emerged as a hotspot for EV business in India, both in EV and EV ancillary manufacturing, as well as R&D segments. Tamil Nadu is also taking rapid strides ahead with its supply ecosystem larger land parcel, proximity to ports and proactive investor support through administrative portals like Guidance Tamil Nadu.
the writing is already on the wall and uh, india's transformative mobility paradigm is the idea is hinged on the shared connected and electric and if you look at this journey uh, states are in the front seat driving this entire ecosystem in a full fledged manner and at niti ayog we've been engaging with the states for the past 5 years and uh, and we have inspired around 27 states and uts have already come up with their state ev policies and out of this 27 uh, almost 18 of them have already notified that's an humongous uh, achievement 18 states and uts have already notified their ev policies so when we uh, closely work with states uh, on the ev policies we we focusly working on nine key thrust areas and these nine key thrust areas are one is manufacturing and second one is overall demand creation and the r&d programs and the ev charging infrastructure and the fiscal incentives and the specification and standards urban mining and so on there is a massive movement of battery powered two wheelers mounting a challenge to conventional scooters and motorcycles from big startups to big brands the options are ever increasing you know indian trajectory as such is going to be very different compared to the western world we are two wheeler rich country in fact we are one of the biggest manufacturers of two wheelers in our country as well as the market size also so in our country this is going to be led by the two wheelers which is cur- currently around 76% of the total automotive vehicles in our country after that I, what i am seeing is after two wheelers it will be public transport if you see the fame two also that's where our focus is first is the two wheeler we have increased the incentive up to the 15000 per kilowatt hour but the game changer is the cap which we have increased from 20% to 40% So now at the capex level two wheeler is almost at par with the ICE vehicles in two wheeler segment It is estimated that the cost of electric vehicles in India will drop to the level of petrol vehicles in the next 2 years This is being made possible by government's production linked incentives and plans to install EV charging points at fuel stations and major highways of the country the number of mainstream two wheeler players who are probably sitting on the wayside and were not really focusing on ev have started also focusing on it so the more the players which come in the market grows bigger however the projection of the governments are very very ambitious it talks of 80% of two wheelers by 2030 in ev 70% in three wheelers this will a lot depend on how much the government incentive continues this is significant because by 2030 India has set a target of 30% of EV sales penetration for private cars, 70% for commercial vehicles, 40% for buses and 80% for two and three wheelers.